Hello, today we'll conclude section 2 on magnetic fields with lesson 11, focusing on applying what we've learned. Let's imagine ourselves listening to some good music. The signal travels directly from the music device to this speaker, where it produces an acoustic signal. Mechanical waves propagate through space until they reach Jota's ears, where he's truly enjoying himself and having a fun time. In today's class, we'll explore the workings of this device, the loudspeaker. The first thing we are going to do is to see what the main elements are. We notice a movable membrane within the cone. The neck fits snugly between the poles of a permanent magnet, resembling a circular crown-shaped magnet. This is more distinctly visible in the image on the right, displaying a cross-section of the speaker. We can see the coil and we see that it is positioned between the north and south poles of the permanent magnet. But what's the physical principle underlying the loudspeaker? It's the magnetic force acting on currents, which you previously learned about in lesson 9. We saw that when a current is immersed in a constant magnetic field, this straight section is subjected to a force that is given by this expression. The force is equal to the current intensity multiplied by the vector product between the length vector and the magnetic field vector. The right hand rule indicates the sense of the force. In this case, with the four fingers of the right hand, we must go from the sense of current flux to the sense of the magnetic field via the shortest path. The thumb indicates that the force, in this case, is vertical and upward. Let's apply this physical principle to the loudspeaker diagram. In this case, the signal is introduced through this coil, carrying the alternating current that we aim to hear. As the term alternating current suggests, the direction of the flux changes. Let's imagine a scenario where, at a certain moment, it enters through this end, as indicated on the screen, and exits through the other end. In that case, in this image, which corresponds to the section of the loudspeaker, the current in the upper part should be illustrated with crosses as it is perpendicular to the screen and directed inward. Meanwhile, in the lower part, the current would flux outward from the screen, hence represented by dots. This current is within a magnetic field generated by the permanent magnet. In the upper part, this magnetic field is vertical and upward moving from the North Pole to the South Pole. In the lower part, it's vertical and downward, again traveling from the North Pole to the South Pole. We have a current within a magnetic field, as indicated by the expression, and applying the right-hand rule suggests that the resulting force is directed to the right. When the current changes sense, it enters at this end and leaves at this end. We will change up here. The currents are represented by points and here by crosses, in the opposite way to the previous one. And the magnetic field maintains its consistent direction. Consequently, according to the right-hand rule, the resulting force in this scenario will move to the left. What is the result? When an alternating signal intended for listening is introduced through this coil, the coil will move either to the left or right, oscillating at the same frequency as the input signal. As the coil moves, it drives the loudspeaker's membrane in synchrony. The membrane's motion displaces the air particles in front of it, creating a sound wave that travels through space to reach our ears. Let's now examine the primary components of the loudspeaker, this time using an actual photograph. This is the membrane, which as you can see has a bellows around it so that it can move. Here we have the coil, represented by the copper-colored winding. To ensure these coils move collectively, there's a plastic structure that holds them together. 
Notice how these two ends of the coil are affixed to the membrane. Coil and membrane move in unison. To examine the details of the permanent magnet, we have these two photographs. In this photo, the central part reveals the North Pole, the yellow area. And the South Pole, if we flip the speaker over, is this part right here. You can see it there as well. Now, let's see it in action. We've connected the speaker to a function generator providing an alternating signal at a frequency of our preference. In this case, we have chosen 14 Hz. This implies that the current alters its flux direction 14 times per second, causing the speaker's membrane to move up and down at the same frequency 14 times within one second. If we raise the frequency, for example, up to 50 Hz, then each time we raise the frequency, the membrane moves faster and faster. What happens? The eye is not able to follow such a fast movement and we see a somewhat blurred image. To show you that at 50 Hz, the membrane moves up and down 50 times in one second, I have prepared this other video. In this video, we're illuminating the speaker with a stroboscope. A stroboscope is a device that emits flashes at a specified frequency. In this instance, it's emitting around 60 flashes per second. How does the experiment function? I'm able to see the membrane only when the stroboscope emits its flash. If the stroboscope emits light at the same frequency as the membrane's movement, I'll consistently perceive the membrane in the same position giving the impression that it's still. That's precisely what's occurring at the moment. If it's at around 55 Hertz, it looks practically still. If I deviate from that 50 something Hertz range, I notice the movement slowing down. The membrane is actually moving up and down 50 times per second. But thanks to the stroboscope, I can perceive the slowed down movement. Otherwise, as we witnessed earlier, it would appear blurred to me. In the following video, what we've done is running through the musical scale from about 260 Hz up to about 490 Hz. For you to observe, when we introduce a 440 Hz tone, the membrane oscillates up and down 440 times per second generating a 440 hertz sound, a tone recognized as LA. In this other video, we're scaling up the frequency significantly, moving into the kilohertz range. And what occurs? Well, as we ascend a lot in frequency, eventually we cease perceiving the sound. This happens because we've entered the ultrasound range, which people don't perceive. And that's all. I hope you liked it and see you next time.